Hello. Hi, everybody. Happy Independence. Happy 50th Jubilee to all of Grenada, Karaku, and PT Matnik and beyond in the diaspora. Happy 50th Jubilee to our friends and that, that are following us, your relatives, to everybody. Happy, happy 50th Jubilee. Welcome to another episode of Simon Says, where fact come first. It's your host, Jenny Simon. And today, of course, we're going to deal with the independent celebration and how that rolled out for some people. Um, it ended up really, really nice with a very good hype with the uh, parade of the bands and and the uh, entertainment, the cultural aspect of it yesterday. I was really good. And I said, congratulations, Uncle Ricky. You did a great job as usual. So we'll take a quick break. Sit down, get your popcorn and your Coke, and let's have a good time. I'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. Welcome back. So I'll start off with a clip of the Prime Minister, Honorable Deacon Mitchell, at the celebrations in Pity Martinique. And, um, well, you know, Pity Martinique is first on his page since the campaign. It's Pity Martinique, Caracou, and Grenada. So let's hear what he had to say and how he did it whilst in Pity Martinique. It is our collective spirit, our shared history, and the values that bind us together, which are the bedrock of our national pride. National pride is more than a fleeting emotion. It is a profound acknowledgement of the achievements, the struggles, the successes, and the triumphs that define our identity as Grenadians. It is the recognition that despite our differences, we stand as one people, united by a shared purpose and vision for a better Grenada. As we raise the flag this morning, let us reflect on our 50-year milestone that has shaped our journey. To the spirit of our ancestors, we stand on your shoulders, from the Kalinagos, who stood their ground and gave their lives in defense of Grenada. To our enslaved ancestors who worked on our plantations. To the indentured servants who came thereafter and were forced to work in subhuman conditions. To the farmers, the sharecroppers, the fishermen, the teachers, the police officers, the doctors, the nurses, the civil servants, the members of the private sector. Many of us, many of our four parents endured difficult and challenging times, but they endured nonetheless. We remember the spirits and the perseverance of T.A. Marishu, of Fedor, the forthrightness and the courage of the father of independence, Sir Eric Matthew Gary, and the role he played in ushering the birth of this nation. Prior to doing so, he raised the social and political consciousness of the working class people of Grenada. 
from adult suffrage in 1951 to becoming an independent nation in 1974. We continue to remember the hard work and progress made by many Grenadians, particularly young Grenadians, during the period of the PRG. We must ensure that because of their perseverance, their endurance, that we mark their legacy and their spirits by ensuring that the struggles of our people do not go in vain, by ensuring that we commemorate and celebrate their successes so that we can teach our Grenadian history to the next generation of Grenadians. We must ensure that as we fight for the next generation, that we instill in them the spirit of our ancestors to overcome challenges, inspire acts of compassion, and foster solidarity. Together, we have weathered storms and hurricanes, storm surges and droughts, and we have emerged stronger and proven that the bonds that tie us together are unbreakable. The struggles of our people and the sacrifices they have made are the foundation upon which this nation is built. It is in the diversity of our landscapes, our culture, our traditions, that we find the richness of our heritage. So as we recognize our 50th anniversary of independence, I want to acknowledge the role that each of us are playing and will continue to play as we continue to build our nation. As we continue to build our nation, but I hope you realize that after the PRG, that was full stop. Then we went to our ancestors and then we come to today. Those of us, the role they play today. So we missed, we cut off, we skipped after 1983 to today. Even the NDC little stent in, um, from 2008 to 13, that get cut off too. Uncle Tilly and them, that get cut off too, because you can't talk about the Uncle Tilly and them without talking about the NNP, Dr. Mitchell and the NNP, right? Coming before and after, before we get to this point here today to the Honorable Deacon. So we just cut off a whole piece, and it's been going on like that throughout the entire celebration. Even other members, they're just not talking about NNP and the 23 years of service to this country. 23 years. You guys know that I loved, I had loved the revolution. I never had to say that. I was a militia at 13. The revolution that was just before the device. I joined the, the, the militia. I was just a child in 74. I think I was in form two, right? And um, I had loved Morris Bishop. I followed Morris Bishop, right? But if Morris Bishop and the revolution and the PRG getting mentioned, how is it that Dr. Keith Mitchell and the NNP gets no mention? I, I, I don't understand that. The prime minister in his campaign spoke an endlessly of, of, of inclusion, of wanting to unite the country. He said at one point he didn't drink the blood of tribalism. All these niceties, all these sexy statements. And today, we just skip a whole period. And that period 
involved the longest serving prime minister of Grenada, the longest serving parliamentarian, because before he became prime minister, he was a parliamentarian. And to make it worse, he is now his majesty's opposition leader. But if the prime minister is doing such, it's no wonder, what, what do we say for the members and the foot soldiers who tend to, to, to write off Dr. Mitchell and the NNP, 33,000 strong up, saying they did nothing in the past 23 years, performing blatant nepotism, victimization, tribalism. This is what we've been getting from the NDC since conception, since they came in, since inception, pardon me, since they came in the office in, in, in June of 2022. Now I saw a post on Facebook that I would like to share with you. And um, I don't know that the individual would want their name called, so I'm just going to read the post, which says, and I'm quoting, let's not try and rewrite our history by skipping pages. Otherwise, our next generation will be misled with false narratives. But we know, um, Paul's narratives and NDC go hand in hand. So that's no issue there. That, that, that's no issue there for them. It is okay. It is part of, of the narrative. Right? What happened from October 1983 to June 20, 23rd, 2022? What happened? Nothing happened. And so what are the NDC, or what is the NDC standing on now? What are they continuing? They keep saying, oh, our government is a continuum. And they've been praised for continuing the projects and the programs of the NNP. So how is it that you want to just wipe out that section? The prime minister, refused to mention, he went all around, talked all sorts of nonsense, refusing, he spoke about the fishermen, the teachers, the, the, the private sector, the police, every single body, except, and, and people, persons, except Dr. Keith Mitchell and the NNP. We were told by the organizers of the 50th anniversary of the celebration when announcing uh, their calendar, that um, the calendar of events, number 12 said on the calendar of events, and I'm quoting, vision 50, prime, minister, prime minister's injection for the future 50 years and beyond. The master of ceremonies at the unveiling of the $50 note and the introducing of the prime minister speaking of his vision for 50 years. She too mentioned and introduced him as, as, as him coming to tell his vision for the next 50 years. This is the, 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 the press secretary as she introduced the prime minister. Come to the point where we want to thank you for being here with us for the first segment. We want to invite you to get refreshed. You can um, stand, stretch, greet a neighbor for 10 minutes. And when we return, our prime minister will present his vision for the next 25 years. 
Okay, so he, he she introduced him as coming to tell us his vision for the next 25 years. Okay. Then came the prime minister to tell us that the vision is not his. And it's for, and it's a vision 75. Let's say what the prime minister has to say. Don't take my word for it. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. I hope you've enjoyed the dream. But this dream is a plan. And the master ceremony said the prime minister's vision. But is this really the prime minister's vision? Is this really the prime minister's words? This is not meant to be a presentation. This is meant to be a conversation. So gone are the days when the politician tells you what the society will be like. The days we need are when we decide what the society should be like. So I want to, just as I reintroduce myself, reintroduce you to the National Sustainable Development Plan 2035. Let me say that again. I want to reintroduce you to the National Sustainable Development Plan 2035. Now, that plan was a plan I met. That plan was a plan I did not have a single input into. That plan was a plan conceived under another administration. That plan has an address to the nation by Your Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade. That plan has an address to the nation by the former Prime Minister and longest serving Prime Minister and longest serving Member of Parliament and known current opposition leader. That plan was drafted by Grenadians from all walks of life who gave the input about this plan. This plan should have started in 2020. But what happened in 2020? What happened in 2020? Well, I thought perhaps you'd suffered from COVID and had died. You don't seem particularly thankful to be here. So COVID happened in 2020, 2021 into 2022. And what happened in 2022? What happened in 2022? New administration. <laughs> I'm a bit confused. I don't know about you. Um, it's, I, I don't know. I don't understand. It's Vision 50. And then it was Vision 25, according to the, the, um, the press secretary. No, it's Vision 75 with plan 2035, right? The, the development, sustainable development plan 2035 is no vision 75. Um, a bit confused, but let me roll, let me roll, we roll it. So he spoke of the plan belonging to the longest serving prime minister, the longest serving parliamentarian, the who is now the, um, reigning opposition leader. That person have no name. That person have no organization. That thing, that plan came under that administration that has no name. But you take it, they take it, and they go on with it. Okay, and that's a good thing. I'm not. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's a very good thing because. Only recently I was speaking to someone and, and they were saying to me, they don't understand why the NDC is not using the sustainable development plan of 20 for 2035 because they don't have no plan. And why they're not using there's a plan, it was a good plan. It wasn't NNP people only that put this plan together. It was Grenadians far and wide. Grenadians of all strata, Grenadians who belong to political parties by the NDC, but it was under that administration. But we stuck 
on Morris Bishop and the PRG, who came into office unconstitutionally, who suspended our constitution on arriving, who had a uh, uh, revolution inside a revolution, which caused their demise, who after the demise, when most of us realized that they had thousands of persons held at the Richmond Hill prison without a trial. Our own former prime minister, Tillman Thomas was one of them. But we stuck on, on the PRG and we stopped there and we cut off a party. And that is 33,000 strong of Grenadians who vote for that party. That's just not to do with Keith Mitchell and the NNP. There are those, thousands of those who support that party, who voted that administration in office. Five times they won, three times of which they won 15 nil. And a big history. And we just cut them off. We just cut them off. How, how is that possible? How can the leader of a country, how can our prime minister be a part of such? So the, the, the father of independence, Eric Matugre, I agree, and he must get his props and he must get his flowers, but they're no perfect person. Yes, he brought independence to Grenada. But what did he do before? He had, before and after, as a matter of fact, he sent persons to train in Chile. They came back and they formed themselves into a group called the Mongoose Gang, who beat up on persons who did not support the GULP. And at the time, especially the NJM supporters and NJM members like Maurice Bishop and, and, and the Winston, uh, Uniston Whiteman and, and the, the likes, right? Henry Graddix, you know the ones that we struggle. Beat them up almost every week. Their face busted, thrown in the back of a truck, pickup truck and, and, and pelt carried and thrown everywhere. Students. Students of the secondary schools were beaten to pulp when they protested certain things. So he was no angel, but he did, on the protest, bring independence to us. It was in the dark because the unions had the electricity cut off so that he couldn't come in with his independence, so to speak. But he did. And he deserved his props because today we are celebrating 50 years of it. It's supposed to be a golden jubilee, but we're not feeling the vibes as a golden jubilee. To me, it's something like tin pan because we paint in stones, we paint in tree trunks, we paint in everything inside. For the most part, black and white, flying buntings, but the vibes is not there because there's no inclusion. There's no inclusion. And so when my friend posted on, on, on Facebook about him not seeing, um, if it's only NDC that's, that, that, that's celebrating, right? And for a minute there, I thought, oh, he, he, he's one of the NDC that realizing what's going on and speaking out about it. But as I read further, I realized he was saying is that only NDC people cleaning and painting, and he's not seeing NNPs or people who do not support uh, NDC. And I got a good smile. 
Because I want to say to my dear friend, Elon Robinson, brother of Randall Robinson, that you started it. That there's a saying, as you make your bed, so shall you lie. And you lying in the bed that you prepared. You prepared that bed that you're lying in. You sow that seed that you're reaping now. And rightly so, you should reap your produce. We believe in PD and last one. We want to believe if your produce. You reap your produce. And I want you to go further and look on Facebook as you've been looking, as you say, and tell us where, and show us too, where you see NDC supporters cleaning and painting during any celebration, and this is uh, independent celebration before this one, where NNP was in office. Show me NDC people cleaning the streets, painting the walls, the stones, the rocks, the trees, putting up burn tents, NDC supporters, when NNP is in office. What did we do? We went to Cameroon Park on the 7th. I heard the, 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 the president of the, of the um, free safe Cameroon Park group saying that they would continue the celebration. Where was NDC yesterday? Were they in the Cameroon Park? As a matter of fact, he said there's no need for safe Cameroon Park again because we now have a friendly government, okay? Now, you made that bed, you lying, right? This is nothing new. NDC had nothing to do with anything, NNP, when wife NNP was in office. We made it a point not to. A few people went to the stadium, but that was a cover up. That was to make people say, oh, you see the whole entire set of them gone down in Cameroon. We know that was a show. That was what it was. Handful. Not, not even as much as 10 of the, of the leadership I'm speaking of. We had buses. We paid buses to bring people down to Cameroon Park. So what are you talking about? You, when came into office, started, even though, you campaign on inclusion. You, the carnival was right there. And what did you do? You started excluding. There's no inclusion with this N N NDC. Something I can say for sure did not happen with the NNP when they were in office. Yes, they might have sidelined some people, but there was inclusion. I, who was on radio every Sunday, for the NDC, like I am today. Speaking of the ills of the NNP, with facts, I my dad, got job, got work, paid work under the NNP administration. And I could go on, I could talk about other people. I just gonna use my testimony. So there was some inclusion, not like what is going on here today. As a matter of fact, NDC, you're all excluding so much, you're all excluding some of your own because they're not in the tight circle at the top. I, and, and the thing is, I wonder if NNP didn't have certain plans and programs and projects they left in the pipeline, yes? Yes, uh, Minister MIT. What would have happened? What would have happened to NDC today? Because you all have nothing new. Y'all have nothing new. So changing the names of some of these programs, like the toilet, bathroom and toilet program to wash and, and the, the um, devotion to best, I know best what, because this is the worst we've seen with the devotion program, push everywhere. So and then by the time they come and they send six people to cut the bush in one area and they disappear, by the time they come, the bush need cutting there again. Just bush everywhere. Right? 
And then of course, the um, development plan 2035 to vision 75. And after the elections, I want you to hear number 10, after the elections, what she had to say about that. Mr. Speaker, that this new bathroom and toilet program, a very first program for the people of Grenada, Caracol, and Martinique. We always hear about Sir Eric Gary and the development he has done. But we have never heard of bathroom and toilet in his time. A caring new national party government, Mr. Speaker, during the COVID pandemic, when we collected less revenue, introduced a bathroom and toilet to lift our people out of poverty. So our people not stupid, Mr. Speaker. We can bring anyone and say, we bring in youth. Well, we have youth here too. Are you looking? When I got involved in politics, I was 32. That's true youth, not 44. 44 is no youth because I'm within that age range and I'm, not, I'm no longer a youth. But we have our sister Maturin Stott who's missing here. She's considered a youth. That's why she's missing here. And I want to congratulate her on her newborn baby. Mr. Speaker, she's a youth. That's why she can give birth. When you're over 40, you're not looking to make children anymore. There's no youth there, Mr. Speaker. The youth is around here. Kate Skeeter Lewis is a youth. And many of our members here, Mr. Speaker, we started as youth, Emily and Pierre, and we have other members who can call the, the very opposition leader that is talking about youth, 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 youth. He entered this parliament as a youth under the new National Party government, Mr. Speaker, and this needs to be known. So we don't get tired of Mr. Speaker, and our people are not getting tired of all this youthful thing. Because they know that the only government that really cares about them is the new National Party government. We need to look back as we talk about housing during their time. How many people can say that we receive housing assistance under NDC government? NDC government see housing and improving the life of people, ordinary people as greedy and needy and greedy. That's what they call them. But the only true government, Mr. Speaker, the only true party that truly cares about our people is the new national party. And our people, they do not forget. So let's not take them for fools and say there's a wave. There's no wave. We're getting tied up in a, in a few areas. Our government will continue to provide assistance. We'll continue to look and develop our people in, our, in the house. They like them. So people do not forget. And they are still there, I believe. All 33,000 of them. You know, I've heard with returnees, people that return, um, the, the ones that have not been back in 20 years and 30 years, and they were planning to come to this. And you hear them speak, and they're so proud of where we are today. And they speak of the, the, the improvements and the development that they've seen since they've last been here. Who developed this, this country? That, what development are they talking about and who's responsible for that development? Yeah. Who's responsible for that development? How could you try to cut them off at the knees? How could you? Now, even their very own, Frances Purcell, she's a member of the second cabinet. She's in every committee that takes place. Anything that has to do with, with, with uh, with, with entertainment and anything for Grenada these days. A few years ago, it was NNP, but now that's the one, one of the iguanas, change skin as the, as, 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 as the, the environment change. You change your, your coat, yeah. I do that piece there like number 10, eh? Qualified. <laughs> oh, that's, I have to, I have to get. You know, and um, in her interview, I heard her saying that she left Grenada as a teenager. And that um, when, when every time she came back, because she always came back sometimes three and four times a year. And, and when every time she came back, she saw improvements and she saw development. Let's listen for ourselves what she had to say. Okay, so okay. Um, <laughs> Grenada today, um, if you're going through and you're reflecting and it is 50, you, you often come home. Um, what are some of the changes? What are some of the developmental areas that you know you feel happy about? Because you said you left as a teenager in 74. No, I left as a teenager, but I left in 77. Okay. But, um, but I, I, I return every year, sometimes nice. three, four times a year. 
and and I must say that every every time I return, I see some improvements. Um, I remember the the first time that I saw our streets, our street lights. Okay. And and how happy I was to see that. Of course, coming from New York, where street lights are a part of our everyday life. And so this was something that I was amazed and I was happy to see us getting. And, um, you know, just a number of things that, that, that makes me happy. I mean, we've been, we've, I've seen a number of improvements in our academics, um, our, the way T, um, TA Mary Show operates, um, the, the programs that are offered at these schools. Um, in my days when I went to school, it was academics or nothing. Now the kids have a, a, the privilege of of getting involved in trade and and um, technical uh, aspects of education, which can afford them a, a good profession or a good you know in the future. And I I believe she meant traffic light. I believe she meant traffic light, not street light. There we go. So these improvements that was happening these many years ago, after. Uh, 1979, she left Grenada in 1979, right? That was the year of the, uh, of the revolution. And the revolution lasted four years. And she'd been coming back after that plenty of times. The, 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 the traffic lights first came under the NNP administration. They all went bad, sat there for a while, and they were bringing it back. They allotted for it in the 2021 uh, budget, budgetary allocation. So um, she been seeing all these improvements. I don't know who been doing these improvements. Ghost? Ghost? No. The Right Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell and the NNP, his NNP administration, they did it. Give them their props. Yes, I agree. A lot more could have been done during that 23 year period that NNP was in office. A lot more should have been done, right? I agree that. But don't say they didn't do anything and don't write them off. Because I could say here as well, that the NDC in the 10 year period they was in office during that time could have done a lot more as well. And if you have to think about an administration that did nothing while they were in office, I'm embarrassed to say, but it would be the NDC. It would be the NDC, not the NNP. And what is worse, you are demonizing the NNP and Dr. Mitchell. And you're turning some people into saints. Eric Matugeri was not a saint. Neither was Maurice Bishop. None of them was. Neither was Keith Mitchell. They were not saints. But they were not demons all. At, and especially at the very beginning. Another thing I say, that Dr. Mitchell, when he was Minister of, of, of Communication and Works, and so before he became Prime Minister, when he started off, he was not as bad as he was when he was coming to the end that everybody trying to demonize him for. But we have those who start off like Dr. Mitchell. Start off. It, it, like, like, like Dr. Mitchell ended. I'm sorry, so to speak. So we moved on and we had, uh, we had the unveiling of the $50 note. And then we learned that it's not ready. It won't be ready for the celebration and that it might be ready by June 2024, I think. I'm hoping, right, that it might be ready by June. And so I'm quite happy to see Sir Eric Gary at the front of the $50 note. And also I'm quite happy to see, it was a, it was a piece of art to see the Karani James and the nutmeg and the cocoa and the, our, our national flower, the bougainvillea. And, and the coat of arms, I think there was something all down or somewhere. The strength, it just went, came together really nicely. And then we flipped. And there was Maurice Bishop at the back of the note. And by my comments earlier on, you would know I'm not happy with that at all. I'm not happy with that at all. 
That came across just as when this administration wanted to launch the celebrations on October 19th. There's no difference there. We put the two together again, right? Maurice Bishop and they did not want the, the, the independence. They fought for it. He, he, he lost his dad in the fight against it, the, the, the protest against, against the, the GULP and, and, and Sir Gary, right? Lasted for four years. Of course, they, had, they did a lot in that four years. They did a lot, and I must com compliment them and commend them for that. They did quite a lot. But they had a revolution inside a revolution, and then came the demise. How is it that we have a, lo uh, a, a longest serving prime minister, a longest serving parliamentarian in the same person, now still in the parliament of Grenada as the her, His Majesty opposition leader, and he didn't even make a dot. As one of an NDC member said to me, he said, "Sister, not even a dot or a, or a dash to say that is Keith Mitchell on the money." I mean, come on, come on. This was too obvious. It was too blatant and unfair. Unfair to the NNP supporters. And again, I say 33,000 of them. 32,000 of them. Here are comments made by a learned attorney, Dr. Francis Electis Casey, a politician in his own right, well respected throughout the length and breadth of Grenada. One might wonder why wasn't the longest serving prime minister somewhere on the note? That's a proper question to ask. I don't have to answer the question, but I can observe that that question may properly arise. And, and I guess the question would answer it because we had two revolutionaries and whether or not, and I'll open it up, whether tenure qualifies to make the $50 bill. It's much more than tenure, my brother. It's, 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 it has to do with contributions. Look at the whole of what we used to call back street. And if you look at modernizing that area, who is the person mostly responsible for that? So it's not just a matter of tenure with the greatest respect. If it were tenure, Morris Bishop would not be on the bill. And, 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 that's, and that actually is, is, a, is a point, because it, tenure alone doesn't get one on. Um, and if I am to be the antagonist in this scenario, um, the person largely responsible for the works of Backstreet is a former minister of works, not a former prime minister. All the more reason why the person could have been considered. I'm not making a big issue of that. Mm -hmm. I am just saying, if I was sitting there, before the third person named Karani James, I would have been wondering yeah. whether it would have been somebody else. When Karani was named, that put paid to any sort of controversy. In fact, it was a streak of genius to right. put everybody together. No question about that at all. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm like you, because and when, when I heard the three, likewise, um, I had three in my head. Um, and, you know, I guess from the images, you could have made a guess. But I do agree with you. Eventually, it is a reasonable yes. question yeah. to ask. Um, and just in witnessing as things unfolded, and if we had to make a guess, then, you know, there, there's at least one other name that must have come into play. Uh, I don't know if you had any gentlemen have any other things. That... Everybody tried to say his name. There's at least one other name. <laughs> We know who you're talking about. I have no issue with Kirani being on the, on the money. He should be. There's no problem with that. But if you're going to put another faith, let it be. It should have been. 
the right honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell. And I don't know anybody in the, in, in the right thinking mind, any, any genuine Grenadian, any, any objectively thinking person who would say no to that. We know when you support a party like the NDC people, they would have gone mad if that happened. But we understand that because that's how it is. When you support a party, especially now, this is the worst I've seen it though. You support the NDC and then it can do no wrong. They can do no wrong, you know? And it is just so sad that some of us refuse to take our heads out of the sand and look. And open up your eyes. I mean, there are those who are doing it right now. I, I run into some of them all the time, almost every day. And um, they're so happy to see somebody that they can speak to on the issues that they are happening. I'm not at all happy with the NDC that they see today and the NDC of yesteryear. When we condemn certain things for, um, what do we say? transparency, integrity, transparency, accountability, and good governance? Where is Uncle Tilly? What happened to those four words? They disappear from your vocabulary. And when I say you, I don't mean Uncle Tilly, I mean the NDC. It disappeared from, from the vocabulary of the NDC. Are we going to close our eyes? Only a certain, a handful of people have benefited from this $22.5 million thus far. You have to be uh, related to, uh, or whether it's by blood or by association or by relationship to a certain amount of persons, to certain people for you to share in the pie. And while you're up there eating the whole pie and cutting big slices for yourselves, you want your, your, your foot soldiers under the table collecting the crumbs. And then they must get up and go out and volunteer. And it's always been like that. The people who are going in with a bag of money are not the ones who are working and working hard, getting dumb and dirty. But what I can tell you, I know about NDC as well. Those people don't like to work for free either. And that's why they don't get great participation from their supporters, because they want money too. They always did. But of course, another thing about NDC is that they're lazy. We produce lots of lazy people. They don't like to work hard, but they just want to win. They win, everybody going home with their bag of money. The people who don't work, didn't work hard. A, a, a customer, I don't know, a customer that's at work. A, a, a supporter said to me, she said, hey, look, look at the price of the of the of the gala. Me so can't afford it. I would have loved to be there, she said. And then she said to me, the up and here, up, up from here concert. They didn't even send us buses to come down from the country. She said, I looked at it on my phone. And when I saw the VIP, I don't recognize these people, except for the prime minister and his cabinet. And of course, maybe the, 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 the plus one in some cases. She said, I don't know these people. I don't recognize these people. Who are they? Where are they today, she says. And I mean, I don't believe in the where they did they thing because I know that you know new persons can can evolve and to help with the process. But I understood where she was coming from. Because from time, people like her been working hard. I met her in the NDC and I've been there for, um, I, I was an NDC card bearing member for 20 something years. And she's been there before, hard worker, barely making ends meet up to today. But cannot enjoy the glory of NDC being, office, being in office today. Because why? She's from the country, she's poor. She's not on the list. She is not on the list. People like her 
they're not on the list. It's always been like that. I'll give you a story. I, when Kirani James won his gold medal, NDC was in our faith. I'm a sport fanatic. And I'm happy that my, my, my friend who was, um, uh, in, I think was the Minister of Sport at the time, um, P.S. Vida Bruno, Victor Bruno, um, was there because she know how I'm a, a, a sport fanatic and um, how I loved Kirani and supported Kirani. I mean, I get diarrhea when Kirani has to run. And that is how I got to go down at the airport to get inside to see Kirani James. I was an, an executive member of the NDC, but I was not given an invitation to go down to the airport to see Kirani James. I got a, a pass from an NNP supporter, if you want to say so, to go in there. And of course, when um, they launched the, the, the Sandals Hotel during NNP, NDC time, most of us saw it in the news. We didn't even know that it was happening. We saw it in the news, the evening news, that Sandals was launched. And we were amazed by the persons we saw sitting in the audience. But as NDC for you, it's nothing has changed with that party, where that is concerned. Nothing has changed. We have to do better. We have to get rid of the maligning. And people have to be able to speak up and speak out. People are afraid to wear colors of the party. Looking in from the, I, I looked at it at home. The, 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 the stadium looked like it was on fire, red. All you saw for the most part was red. People are afraid to wear green, of course, because you don't want to be aligned right now. And even yellow. Okay, there are those who don't want people to know right now that they supported the NDC. So people just gravitated to the red, which is probably a good thing. So we get rid of the color thing that has caused the biggest divide in our nation. The biggest divide in our nation today. But I have never seen an independent celebration in all my 50 something years of living on this earth. Because from kindergarten, we knew about independence. Remember the treat? You got your, your rock bonds and your, your Fanta, your red Fanta, and then your cookies, huh? ice cream. We knew Walker Gary gave us treat, and we knew of the independence. And I have never seen a more divided nation. And look at the time, at our 50th anniversary celebration. We're not, in, the persons are not included, huh? The committees are all the same person, them and their family and their friends and their in-laws, everybody enjoying the good life. And look at how most, most of, and I would say, except this last one yesterday, came out flat. In some cases, you could say they had a little audience because of course it was free, but much more people was expected. But you cannot want to exclude people from the table where the pie is sharing in slices and have them on their knees under the table with their hands outstretched, begging for crumbs and expect togetherness, expect unity. And, and what is so sad, you call for unity all the time. Let's come together. And in the same breath, you victimize, you marginalize the same people you're asking to come together. How does that work? Is that even possible? No, it's not. You can't eat your cake and have it. It don't work that way. But then we know that. We know that.
I am so heartbroken. I am so heartbroken. But where we are today as a people, at this golden jubilee celebration, and we better spin around quickly. We better turn around quickly. Or else, or to say, who can here go here? Who can here go here? We we'll take a quick break and come right back. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. So there were quite a lot of big money spending for the celebration. I mean, lots of fanfare in some areas. And uh, if you're fortunate enough to be related, as I said, by blood or relationship, then things would have been in your favor. Now, our creative ambassador, Orlando Romaine, who is responsible for, who is responsible for the creative death, broke a surprise a couple of days before the, um, the seventh and the celebrations on the seventh about drones. And he said there were going to be 500 drones. 500 drones are going to light up the sky. And I thought we were going to use um, fireworks to do so. But in addition to the fireworks, we're going to have 500 drones. And, um, well, you know, and Simon says we have to do our investigation. So I did so. And I got some estimates of what might have cost us for the leasing of these 500 drones, the shipping and bringing the operation team to Grenada, which should include, should have included at least four pilots I was told from a foreign drone company. Um, the team should be at the destination at least two weeks before the show. And that involves airfare, room and board, uh, food, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. All that comes with it when you bring in people to do stuff. We all know about that. Uh, a conservative figure of half a million US dollars was estimated to me, which is like a million three hundred and thirty-five thousand five hundred easy dollars. Now, was that necessary? Yes, the show was magical. It was euphoric. It was enchanting. It was exhilarating. It was creative to use some of the adjectives I heard and saw describing it. And indeed, it was all of those things, and maybe even more. It was. But there's a word called priority. And could we use screens to execute that presentation? You know the screens you put up and you have video, and you show the same thing, only not the drones executing it, right? And what would have happened? A drop in the bucket when it came to our expenses for that event, for that show of drones. If you have to choose between buying food to feed your kids and taking them to see a movie that all their friends are going to see and everybody's excited about this kid's movie. If you have to choose between feeding your kids and taking them to the movie, which one would you choose? Feeding your kids, right? If you have to choose between taking your family to Disneyland because your colleague has just taken her to Disneyland, but you have a daughter that needs to go to college. What would, you, what would you choose? Going to Disneyland or sending your daughter or your son to college? And we talk about putting people first. We just had two age homes closed down. Two. Now a number of elders are displaced. 
Some are back at their homes alone with no one to look up to them, no one to care for them. Two, age was closed down. Every Saturday, DJ trucks going through the island, throughout the island, begging for help, for health care for some person, kids, adults, elderly, eye problems, cancer, kidney problems, you name it, every Saturday. Sports people, imagine sports people getting injured playing sports and we have to beg on a truck for money to help them get medical. We don't have not one properly running, functioning hospital in our tri-island state and where we know about the clinics, not one properly function, functioning, running clinics, health clinics on island. I was reliably informed that the Ministry of Health sent persons to Piti Matnik recently, quite recently, to get the suturing materials there, suturing things to stitch when you get a cut or if you have an operation and you need to be stitched, the suturing materials from Piti Matnik because there are none in the hospital. Let us pray that nobody in Piti Matnik needs suturing anytime soon. Needle and thread, <laughs> we don't have in the hospital. Hmm? On February 2nd, a young mother, 38 years old, newly married, pregnant, lost the life, lost her life and her baby's life. They both died at the general hospital. She died on her birthday. She had complications and they had to try and take the baby from her. They both died. They both died. While we leasing 500 drones, our scholarship program is in trouble. Students are afraid that they would not be able to do their exams or if they manage to do their exams because the ministry write a letter, they're afraid they will not be able to get their result. Our school feeding program for our young ones are in shambles. After our cabinet, our ministers say in parliament that the government is taking over that program and that the parents won't have to send a dollar they send a day for their children to get warm food, healthy food at their schools. They have to know, some of them have to pay or else, but they get them porridge. And, and, and not a healthy put together diet. Because somewhere along the line, that program is not up and running properly as it should. I understand for this 50th celebration, remember, I spoke about treats. Even primary schools during the LMP administration, from the time of the, the Esther Eric Gary come up, to the NNP administration, gave treats to the schools. This time, with $22.5 million floating out there, I was told that the schools and the parents had to chomp up to cook the oil down or whatever treats they decided to give their children, the children at the school. We have no food security for our people, no food security. If the walls escalate and that container or those containers cannot come to that port every Thursday, as they do, crop or smoke we pipe, we're going to starve to death because we import everything. Even our vegetables and ground provisions that we import from neighboring islands, if there are problems of shortage of food, St. Vincent ain't gonna send their fig and their dashin and their yams to us. And Trinidad ain't gonna send up their carrots and whatever we get from Trinidad. So we're in trouble. Our farmers are planting less because this government, that's so big and bold 
and they had a belly. Got rid of the new the, the, the MNIB. Got rid of the MNIB. And so we have even less food to We cannot feed ourselves. Our hotels have to import when our farmers should have been able to support that program. But we big and we bad and we bull and we have belly and we got. Not so, the minister of MIT told us. And folks, let me just say something before I end. Some administration, they are afraid to take the tough decisions early. But we are not afraid. That is why our Prime Minister said he's going to transform Marketing Board. I understand the Lagoon Road. I understand the Lagoon Road was there to be worked on before. But they had no guts. They had no belly. We're refusing to pay the low-income workers who worked with the faith organization. They earned money. They worked. Then we sort out the business between the administration and faith after. But pay the people. Pay them. We couldn't afford to give an increase to the seed beneficiaries across the board. A mere $200 a person. We took the low income housing from our low income earners and we gave it and we exposed it to the middle income and the rich, the upper class citizen. And we smiling, kiki ki, 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 ki. It was exhilarating, it was magical. We will find out that thing about magical. We will find out the thing about magical. Because we're increasing the license fees and the fee to inspect your vehicle so that we can fix our roads. But we have we were able to get $22.5 million to give. And I would say one person to play with and to spread to whomever he wants. $22.5 million. We're going to find out what is magical when workers start to lose their jobs in this new year because the employers cannot afford to pay that minimum, that increased minimum wage that they, we talk about. And it's a good thing. But we don't have the sustainable development to create the cash flow to pay these people that kind of money. If you ain't making, you can't spend. So let's deal with these things. If we have, if we can put our hand on that type of money, a million plus to bring 500 drones to get to Grenada, least that was not necessary. How can't we find monies to put towards our healthcare system and to help our poor people out of the gutter? How can't we find that type of money so easy? $22.5 million. And it's who's executive director, and it's who's this, and it's who's that, and positions, big positions, and money being washed. All in all, from what I saw yesterday, because I wasn't well, I slept a lot of the day for the day. It was a great show. It was a great show. Congratulations to whoever was involved. Ricky and, and your team and, and whoever, the, the persons that took part, the cultural part, the, 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 the um, announcers, everybody did, they, did a good job. However, we must set our priorities right. We have a people to feed. We have a people to take care of. If we're going to speak of putting people first, let's put people first. Let's put people first. I'll take a quick break and come right back. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click 
subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. Welcome back. Money, 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 yeah? Uh, as I said, there is so much money out there for these celebrations. So much money, 22.5 million is or was spent. I'm not sure how much spent. We have not gotten any kind of report as yet. I guess there'll be a postmortem soon. I don't know if you hear where the money went. There are things that I know that I won't and can't, not can't. I won't repeat on air, um, at least not yet. Let's hear how the money was spent. Let's hear how it was spent. Uh, the nation was promised accountability on the spending, so we await. We need transparency and accountability, Uncle Tilly. Like rap gun with your tongue. I mean, I don't understand it. You're part of it. I, I saw you at the in the front at the unveiling of the money and of the $50 note. Um, I must say you didn't look quite happy. You didn't smile a lot and clap a lot. And even um, your wife next to you, she was a lot looking a lot happier than you. Maybe that's because she was sitting um, next to, was it there? She was sitting next to Dr. Mitchell. That's a joke. <laughs> um, but we need to pull back a bit and, and use some of the morals of the old NDC and do not allow nation builders to destroy that brand. But I fought hard for that brand. Took the, took the woman's arm. We defended NDC when everybody took hold after 2013 when NDC lost their 15th seat, the first whitewash they got. And most people took hold, all the big shots. I came forward, became president of the woman's arm. And we went from village to village every Sunday together with my brother Glenn Noel and Mr. Burke at some time. Fighting to save the brand of the NDC and to watch that brand being diminished and to see people who are posing in that brand as NDC heads and knowing they're not, and they don't hide to say it, you know. They don't hide to say that they're not NDC supporters. But it's all on you all, I'm out, I'm out. So we're asking for integrity, transparency, accountability, and good governance. Or are we just all happy with power and money and hell with the rest of us? I want to move on to my is it true section. And Pity Martinique is getting their fair share. Is it true, Mr. Terence Logan, personal assistance to the minister, Kevin Andrew, in Pity Martinique also has an impromptu security company. Now, you know, after the 2022 elections, June 23, there were endless, I mean, I don't have a number right now, security, impromptu security companies sprung up so that NDC members can get, collect money at the end of the month or maybe now by monthly. Um, in some cases, it wasn't a bad thing. In some cases, there are maybe one or two well-deserved, well-deserved. However, we remove people that was there eating food and we bring in ours, we say it's our turn now. Our turn now, but not for when to go and clean up outside. Eh? They want LNP people to come and help them clean the streets and paint. Our their turn is only to go home with a bag of money. Now, so this gentleman, he 
former impromptu security company as well. And here it is. They're securing, one of the places they're securing is the clinic that NDC claim has nothing in it. What you're securing if there's nothing in it? But it's for the money you're securing like hell. Is it true? The fire truck or truck that was promised to Pity Magni more than two years now, because it was promised since during the campaign by the minister, now minister, Kevin Andrew. And after a while, in speaking in parliament and wherever he was, the fire truck, along with the chair, the dental chair, was on the way. Two years now. Is it still on the way? And these I'm asking for Pity Martinicans, eh? This I'm asking for Pity Martinicans. So is it true the dental chair is still on the way? I think we even saw a portrait at the time and they were told it was on the docks waiting to be cleared. Yes, more than a year now. The people of Pity Martinique would like to know, Minister Andrew, when you speak in parliament of the work done on the wharf, what work was done on the wharf? That's the public wharf, because you know there's a private wharf that they're using. What work was done on the wharf? And who did the work? And how much the government of Grenada paid to fix the wharf, if it was fixed? Who tried to fix the wharf and put the planks and the pieces of pan to cover up the old broken grid. The people of Pity Madnik want to know why was the road contracts given to two individuals, supporters, supporters of the NDC, who knows nothing about construction. And the construction workers on the island was left without work. Is it true they now have to subcontract the road work to others, to contractors who are really persons who are really contractors? So now are they getting a blind? So they have the money goes to them, the contract goes to them, they get paid for being the contractor and now have to subcontract workers. The people of PT Madnix ask, ask you. Minister Tevin Andrew, are you the representative for all of Pity Martinique or just a few? I guess time will tell. I guess time will tell. The people of Pity Martinique want to know if you know there are huge containers of fuel on the island of Pity Martinique. And if you do what, and if you do, what is the real reason for paying the Dolly C $14,000 a trip to bring fuel to Pity Martinique? And there's fuel sitting there. Now, I have a couple of questions I need to ask. And the first one, is addressed to Senator Rahman, my, I, 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 whom I adore very much when he is presenting in the Senate, I must say. But Senator Rahman, I want to know, who do I have to contact to be able to advertise my business? Or other business people might want to know as well. I'm asking for myself, but I'm sure it would help others to advertise on the lawn of the Morris Bishop Highway. What's the criteria to get through, sir? I would need, I need your help in that. Could you help and direct me where I need to go to be able to put up my, stick my advertisement on the lawn of Morris Bishop Highway. My next question is to the minister of MIT, Andy Williams. Now, if you look on the screen, you'll see a nice pretty food truck 
on, uh, on up there. Minister Andy, when you finish working with Naya, it is, to make Ants Nest possible, there are a few of us who are waiting in line to get hook up as well. I wouldn't mind building a nest there too, at all, and I'm dead serious. I know someone tell me they wouldn't mind putting a Jack Spanier nest. Wait, putting a Jack Spanier nest there as well. And, uh, some of you young people may not even know what's a Jack Spanier. Uh, um, it's in the family of the bees and the wasp. And so where if you get a sting with a Jack Spanier, run. Or if you see a Jack Spanier, run before you get a sting. So I would like to go on there to we clean up the the um the lagoon, the Kirani Boulevard, as we should call it. And by the way, oh God. We had $22.5 million. Do some better signage on, on, on the, in, the, in the boulevard for Kirani James now. Hmm? And while I'm at it, at the airport, you have uh, the, the sign that greets us as we come in, on, on where we're still on the tarmac with Kirani James. He's still there with the gold and the silver medal. He has since won a bronze. So if you can change that, you know, it will be nice. It will be nice. And, and, and speaking at the airport, I want to say what a beautiful expansion program the NNP and um, Institute there. <coughs> Excuse me. It, it, I mean, it's, it's unfolding very nicely. And um, I want to say congratulations to the NNP and the NDC for finishing executing the bypass road, the whole entire thing. It's a very beautiful, beautiful execution taking place there. Can't wait to see the finished product, but it's really, really shaping up to be nice. But I want to go back to um, Minister Minister um, MIT on the on the boulevard. And the, uh, we're good for the goose, good for the gander. I don't know how um, Naya seems to be a special person, but we all are. So when you finish with Naya. I'm in the front of the line for the next hookup for my for food truck. But nice idea for nice. I ain't saying it. I'm afraid that thief my idea. So um, hook me up. I have a question for Mr. Gregory Bowen. Did you know that the Postal Corporation vehicle, sir, was on the motorcade? Uh, I believe that. As far as we were told by the now um, uh, person in charge of the of the of the of the postal corporation, Mr. Randall Robinson, but he's the CEO or the or the managing director, I'm not sure which one, that um, you owned it. And um, so since we were um we asked here on Simon says who owned it after the government came in, we want to know who was the real owners. We have not heard a thing, so I'm assuming it's still you. And I don't know if you know that your vehicle was on the motorcade. Yeah, and we're trying to um, stop that type of thing, you know, to save um, gas and stuff. So we can't afford to have the, I don't know if you know. So I'm just letting you know and so that you can take care of it. And while I'm at it, I'm going to tell you that it's normally on Facebook or during the day, um, you know, posting, liking, sharing, um, and, and, and spreading, you know, the, the gospel of the NBC throughout the day's work. That's something you might want to deal with as well. You know, just by the way, yeah. So uh, we come to the end of another episode of Simon Says. I, I just want to say that um, when all the spending is over, and, and a lot of people are concerned about the money and where it came from, and why so much money to spend, we need to celebrate, and we knew we needed to celebrate in a big way, of course. And I have no issues with that. But the type of money that was spent, and we're looking for what it was spent on. Uh, after this whole celebration is over, we still have a country to run. We still have a people to feed, okay? So let's, let's try and prioritize. Let's try and prioritize. Folks, it's a wrap on today's episode of Simon Says. Once again, it was a pleasure conversing with you, as always, keeping them honest. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Simon Says. 
with facts come first. See you next week, next uh, same time, same place for another episode of Simon Says. I leave you with one of our best, the wizard. You sing in too much politics. That is why you keep getting licks, Calypsonian. tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode.